Hey guys, what's up? My name is Thomas Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be examining what is the cost of privacy and anonymity in 2021 and going onwards. I think this is a pretty interesting question and is worth making a video on because at its core, this channel does make a living. I'm able to do this full time because I am recommending privacy and anonymity products. So let's go ahead and do a deep dive into that. Hey guys, if you're looking to increase your privacy um, to kind of like my recommended level, you should be at least using three products. You're going to need a good VPN and you can find my recommended VPNs on VPNTierless.com. Tier one options are the best. Use code TomSpark for all those ones and it should get you some discount. Number two is you're going to need an anti-doxing tool that deletes your real life information online from data brokers. So if someone does manage to find your, your real life name online, they can't look up your address, your phone number, or any of your family members to harass or even swat you. That's essential. I would recommend a service called Join Delete Me. And if you use code TomSpark, you can get 10% off that. Thirdly, I would recommend a private encrypted email provider instead of using Google that pretty much just logs all your data and sells it off to advertisers instead use a private encrypted email like private mail with code tom spark you could get 50 percent off that super solid service actually made by the same people who made torgar vpn so you know you can trust it also guys if you're looking for a more private and anonymous way of calling people texting signing up for accounts or anything like that where you don't want to put your real number i would recommend a service called hush.com which has a phone app that you can use to have your own private phone number and if you use the link down in the description down below you could get an uh, unlimited account uh, pretty much lifetime for around 25 bucks with 6,000 text messages or around a thousand call minutes per year which is a really good deal anyways guys if you want to help support the channel check out any of those products and use my discount codes i'll put the links and discount codes down in the description down below and back to the video right now there are so many pr paid and also free products out there um, that guarantee you more privacy and anonymity online but what is the business model behind it? Privacy is not a free thing after all. And most free products do log and collect your data and sell it off to advertisers in one way or another. Google does this, Facebook does this, and a lot of other companies as well. So if a product is free, it's generally kind of understood in the privacy community that your data is a cost and you are the product. If you're using a free product, and they're not selling your data, it's generally an exception to the norm. But why would a good, genuine product that protects your privacy, offers you good features, um, be free and not make any money for the company? Maybe they're making some money some other way. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to examine in this video. We're going to try to understand what is the best value proposition. Is it better to use a free product, a paid product, or a freemium product? and what are the pros and advantages to each one. So guys, let's first examine VPNs. There's like, I would say kind of three types of VPNs. You have like paid VPNs, you have free VPNs, and then you have like what are freemium VPNs. Now paid VPNs are probably my recommended option and the go-to VPN option that I recommend here on the channel. There are a wide disparity of prices between paid VPN services though. So I make it uh, kind of like a priority on my channel to recommend affordable ones. My top two recommended choices for a paid VPN would be TorGuard and WeVPN. Um, both of those with code TomSpark, you could get around 30 to $40 a year and pretty affordable monthly pricing as well. Now paid VPNs are essentially um, requiring money from customers to secure their data. Um, and a paid VPN essentially is kind of making the promise that there's no compromise of privacy. You're paying them the service and they're never going to give away any logs or anything like that. So it is like a paid trusted relationship. They have incentive to protect your data because you're paying them. And as soon as you don't trust them anymore, you're not going to pay them anymore. And essentially the product isn't going to be useful or used. The only downside to paid VPN providers is that it's a very competitive space, of course. And smaller VPN companies um, do have to compete with other ones that are willing to take on big investors. And this is kind of what we've seen happen with the paid VPN industry. We have huge VPNs like NordVPN, IPVanish, CyberGhost. All these VPNs are huge companies scooping up VPNs all the time. And it does make it harder for other smaller paid VPN providers to compete with them. But at the end of the day, paid VPNs, you get your money's worth because you get the best customer support, um, enhanced development times. Um, essentially, you kind of get what you pay for. Since you're paying money, 
you get a good product most of the time with variations here and there, which is one reason I've created the tier list to show you, you know, what product is the best for your money after all. So the second type of kind of VPN we have is like a free VPN service. And these are usually smaller companies that are mostly like mobile based. Um, they are kind of freemium products in a way because they do offer paid plans, but most people don't really use those paid plans and they're pretty expensive overall. These free VPNs are everywhere on the app stores and their main business model is probably to sell your data back to China, um, make money with ads and offer you kind of just a not that feature rich or complicated product. Um, so that way they could just kind of monitor your data because you're connecting to their servers and they've access to everything you do pretty much there. So that's kind of like that business model. And I would never really recommend to use any of these kind of VPNs all the time in the news. You see some kind of scandal or another where they leak data, they haven't secured things properly. And that's because um, as a whole, they're not really focused that much on the business. A lot of times they just kind of spin these up, hope to make money here and there. And then they kind of just abandon it. A lot of times with free VPNs, they won't have multi-platform support. You won't be able to find uh, even any customer support barely at all. The products will be glitchy. Um, the company will be shady. And I've had a lot of problems with the free VPNs and I don't really recommend using them at all. Now, free VPNs do have an advantage in some ways in terms of the market. Um, you know, and why do people even make them if there's so many? Well, free VPNs are easier to get traffic for there's certain um, keyword terms and stuff that people are searching for and you see other vpns uh reviewers kind of doing this as well it's like a popular thing to advertise free vpn stuff because it's easy to get views and clicks and stuff like that and you see a lot of other even freemium vpns using the same kind of model having the word free and vpn it's just automatically going to get you more clicks and stuff like that so that's kind of one reason this kind of niche does kind of exist and why other freemium VPNs kind of try to take some of that idea as well into their business model to advertise. Once you can say you're a free VPN, you open yourself up to a new market essentially. Now, next we have what I would call freemium VPN providers, not necessarily just free VPN providers, because some of these products are okay at the end of the day, and some of their more premium um, aspects of these VPNs can somewhat compete with some other paid VPN providers. I just think not as well. Now think Proton VPN or Windscribe. These VPNs are pretty new onto the scene, but managed to gain a decent following. Primarily, I think because they had this free VPN terminology and keyword use, which attracted a lot of users who were looking for a free VPN provider. These VPNs at the end of the day are hoping that free VPN users will convert and be um, interested in the product and like the product and convert to paid customers. Now, I don't think this is as effective as a business model as these companies think, but the free VPN model does allow them to attract new customers and undercut other VPN competitors and enter into the market and gain kind of um, traffic that way. Now, freemium VPN providers like Proton or Windscribe or some other ones out there, they offer a much more compromised VPN free model um, that doesn't really compete that well with actual paid VPN providers. So it's a kind of a gimmick at the end of the day just to get them more traffic. These freemium VPN providers are limiting bandwidth. Um, you don't get that much bandwidth. Speeds are always limited. Service selections are limited. Features are limited. Um, so they're really not that much different in terms of use case than other free VPNs on the App Store, just maybe slightly more reputable. However, that said, I fundamentally believe that these freemium VPN providers have trouble with company profits because free VPN users don't convert most of the time. They're looking for a free product. And they're not really interested in paying. Sure, there's gonna be a certain amount that might convert over to the paid access version, but a lot of them don't. I saw this all the time on my Discord. People were saying like, hey, you know, I like Windscribe and it's the best VPN. And I'd be like, do you pay for it? And they'd be like, no. I just make a free account every time I want to, you know, download something and I've done this many times or I just bought, you know, free accounts and stuff like that. I buy free paid accounts and there's just so much abuse and people using these services that don't actually pay, which I do think hurts the VPN itself, the, the paid version of that um, service. Because the VPN has to devote free uh, resources to these free users, giving them the servers and even give time just handling fraud and stuff like that with these free users. They're more responsible for people on this amount of free users using their VPN that could do something illegal with a VPN. And that's also a concern, I think. 
So there is like this free component to these freemium VPN providers, but I also think the paid component also does suffer because there is a certain amount of focus put on the freemium model. Um, in the VPNs that I mentioned, like Proton and Windscribe, I've noticed that a lot of times they don't have as fast speeds. The development times are a little bit slow. Um, there's been some security vulnerabilities in the past and they have really small development teams. Overall, they just haven't ranked that high in my tier list. Freemium options are just kind of like a marketing tactic for these VPNs to get more traffic and it certainly worked, but I don't think freemium VPN providers as a whole present as good of products as just VPNs who are focusing on the paid model. Um, the paid VPNs that I like have always just ranked better. They've had more consistent speeds, um, better customer support, um, better development times, less bugs and stuff like that than freemium VPN providers who just seem to have a little bit too much on their plate with uh, messing around with free users as well. Next, we could kind of talk about another category being like password managers and, you know, if the same thing that applies to VPNs applies to password managers. 